All right, welcome to Six Gun Guitars Luthier video series. Um, this should be part three here. Now this is one of the items that I am the most proud of. This is a fret sawing box. Um, it's essentially just a miter box, really nothing too fancy here. But the nice thing about it is I made an index out of just a regular fretboard. Um, the best way to do this is to actually purchase a fretboard from a Luthier supply house that's already pre-slotted to use as an index. Um, they're going to be radius, so that might be a little bit problematic, but you can use that first one to make a nice flat one like this. So that way you know that you're not making copies and copies of copies. You're making a copy from an original every single time, which is going to make the results a lot more uniform. Now the way that this works, and actually here the way that I made it, and again there's, there's going to be instructions for this on the website as well, um, but a video will help to kind of visualize things a little bit just because I'm not making this thing from start to finish. I'm kind of describing the process of how it was actually made and it's been made for years. But the way that I did this was this bottom piece is just a workboard. Initially I just made this top portion here with this top block, these two side rails, and then this bottom piece that kind of holds everything together. What this winds up basically becoming is just a regular old miter box and there's no slot in it at first. It's all made out of one, two, three, four solid pieces and it's glued together. And I glued it together with a little wax paper over a known flat surface just so that way I knew that everything would be flat and square and good. And the way that you get your hole in here is I took this little miter box, I, I took it off the thing after it got glued and everything like that, I brought it over to my chop saw and I lined it up nice and square and I just went ahead and sawed a hole right through here with the chop saw. Now obviously the kerf on this tiny little hole for the fret saw is way skinnier than the kerf that was made by the table saw or even by the chop saw. You can, again, you can do either one. I did the chop saw. But what you wind up being able to do is pull these two pieces together after the cut is made. You pull the two pieces together and then you insert the fret saw in between them. Lay it all the way down to the bottom. Clamp everything together, not too hard, but hard enough because we do want a little bit of motion in here so we can actually saw. We don't want the saw to be permanently pinched in there. What I wound up doing was I put this whole thing together, clamped it down really good with my saw in here so I knew what kind of width I was going to need, and I drilled and screwed this thing into the baseboard. So that way, once I took everything apart, I've got this perfect little hole in here that just fits the fret saw. And I also have the nice flat surface and everything is square, you know, especially being square up against here, which is really important to make the hole straight. The other neat little thing about this guy is that it might be a little hard to see, but right before you glue this thing together and screw it down, you have to insert a little metal spacer in here. And what this little metal spacer does, and I actually used a razor blade that I shaved the sharp portion off of because it just happened to be a little thicker blade and it fit perfectly inside of this slot because that's what we're going to do to index it. We're going to make it so that way every time you slide this thing through here it locates on one of these slots meaning that if a board is taped to this side when you cut those slots it's going to cut them in the exact same locations. So essentially you've made a machine that's going to duplicate whatever you give to it on the front side. So again if these are wrong every other board that's made out of it is wrong. So take the time make this right. I re definitely recommend buying a store-bought board the first time because measuring the things out every single time, I mean, yeah, you'll probably get it right, you know, after a couple of tries, or you might even get it right the first time, but then you're gonna have to take it over and saw it, and if the sawing is off, that's gonna ruin all the efforts up to that point, and you usually don't find out that something is off until you get up into this region, meaning you've already done 15 or 18 frets, and then you finally get to the last one and completely ruin an entire project. That's Murphy's Law, that's just how it works. And again, when I do my templates, I always label them, really important label them so that way you can see what's on here so that way and I know right now that this is a 25.4 inch template if I had any different scale lengths or whatnot I could pick those out readily and I would know exactly which one I was grabbing it's you know you probably line them up next to each other and tell but you know again it's just easier to know right off the gate so what I did like I said before when I sandwiched these two together with the saw in there is I put that tiny little blade put that tiny little blade in there and it's nice and wide, and the reason I want it to be nice and wide versus some of these systems use a locator pin or a dowel, the reason that I wanted it nice and wide is because the fret slot's nice and wide. When I push this thing through the bottom, and it, there it is, and it seats on that, it's, there it goes, it seats on that thing, there's no play in here. This doesn't move at all. And the nice thing about that is when you hold this thing down and get your saw out here and start sawing your frets, the only really thing you have to worry about is just holding the piece up against the side here, which is pretty easy because these saws are pretty nice. 
Now the way to do this, and again, instructions are on sixgunguitars.com for this. There's gonna be some more pictures and some basic instructions. Like I said, I don't do a start to finish because this piece is already done, I'm not taking it apart. But based on what you see here, most folks can build a simple miter box, chop it, put a little piece down in there for a locator, and then put it on a workboard. And the other function of the workboard too is that you can clamp it to the wood, or clamp it to the surface here at the desk. So that way it doesn't go anywhere, it just adds a little bit more stability and makes things easier. So the way to do this is you take your index, turn it upside down, take the piece that we're actually going to make into a new fretboard, and I'm just going to take this blank piece here that I've got, um, nothing fancy really. The biggest thing we want to do is make sure that w at least the one edge here is jointed and perfectly level, or perfectly straight. So what I do is I line them up, and then just get some regular old masking tape, and very carefully, because you don't want to cover up any of the slots, so this first one's going to be done pretty close to the top. Very carefully, I just wrap the tape around it, keeping it nice and square. And we do the same thing for the other side, again, making sure that we're not covering over any fret slots, because we don't want to undo the tape. The tape is the clamp. So cover that. Now we're ready to go. We've got the index on the bottom, and we've got the other piece on the top. And anything that this index gets locked into, it's going to cut a piece. It's going to cut the exact same hole on the other side. So, take a clamp, clamp down one side, clamp down the other, just so that way this thing doesn't go dancing around, and very slowly move it through until it seats over that first fret in the index. And then use a saw. It. So first one's done, and then you slide it forward to the second one. It, it seats itself. And the third one, and I'm only going to do one more of these. And what that winds up doing is we saw three fresh fret holes fret slots. And here's the cool thing. They're, they're exactly perfectly indexed to the piece that's below it. And because of that locator pin, and because we've got these guys taped together really nice, as I keep progressing through here and moving my way down, it's going to keep sawing these positions for the frets in the exact same position as my index is here. So once you get done to the end, all you have to do is pull the masking tape and you'll have a completely copied fretboard that will have the exact same dimensions as your workboard. Great little item, and again, as far as expense goes, um, again, they do sell these things online. Um, they're pretty nice. They've got indexes and indicator pins and all kinds of good stuff on them. They're really nice and flashy. But again, all this stuff was just found in my shop. The screws, the wood, the clamp, I mean, everything was found in the shop. I took these. These were fretboard blanks that I made. Um, I made them from in another, I've got an article on that. You can read on how to do that. Um, fretboard blanks are another thing that's just super, super easy to make, and I'll hopefully cover that fairly soon in another video. But doing this and making all this stuff yourself versus having to buy it really, really helps out a lot because, again, my total cost of this was literally zero because all this stuff was already sitting around the shop. But if you had to go out and buy five or six pieces of wood and some string, you know, or some screws, you're looking at another five, six, eight bucks, which really isn't bad. So, But that is the fret sliding jig. And if you have any questions, just email me, sixgunguitars at gmail.com. I can send you some more pictures or whatnot or point you to some resources to help you out to make one of these. But this is a fantastic little item because, again, you'll be able to make the exact same fretboard the exact same time every time. It'll always come out nice, and the scale and everything will always be right.